Hey guys, this is Yan San Soup here, and I'm here with Delaware's own J. Mars. What's up, Jay? That's my word for me. She's dreaming and styling for black diamond shabalas, Moscato bottles and models. You see me, you better holla, holla at me when you're speaking. Now I'm known for killing beats, but if you see me, guaranteed that that's the same. So, if you guys don't know who J. Mars is, he's a young rapper out of Delaware by way of Philly or vice versa. And um, if you haven't heard his hit song, Black Diamond Shambhalas, uh, go YouTube that, as well as his song with Chill Moody, Kingdom of Hearts. So, tell us about your style. Tell us about who you are. Um, well, J. Mars, J. Mars, J. M., all that. Um, <clears throat> I'm just, you know, a kid from a small town, small state, just trying to um, make some music and uh, kind of um, just invoke, you know, evoke emotion. That's all I'm really about. Um, just bring emotion out of people. So, um, yeah, that's what I really try to do for my music. Cool, cool. So, um, who would you base your sound off, or like, what type of style do you have? Or, um, well, you know, I'm not too. Uh, I haven't been doing this for too long, so I can't really tell you that. But, um, I guess I could tell you who kind of inspires me. Um. Uh, some of the greats that inspire me, of course, Jay Z, Kanye, um, Eminem. Uh, just from a rapper's perspective, and um, for this project, a lot of different artists uh, inspired me. Um, Lana Del Rey definitely inspired me for this project a lot. So it's definitely going to be a, a darker feel for this next project. Um, and Ed Sheeran, they definitely inspired me. I feel like Lana Del Rey is in every one of our videos, but yeah, <laughs> yeah that's it. Yeah. But, um, can you tell us about your earliest, like, hip-hop moment? Like, when was that moment where you were like, yo, like, I want to be a rapper? Man, you know what? A lot of the hip-hop heads aren't even going to like my answer. But, um, because they're going to be like, what? But Don't say Kingdom Style. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, but the hip-hop heads not even going to be like, ah. Like, but, um, I first really, really got into rap when I heard Bow Wow. Like, real shit. <laughs> Real shit. I was, I was not even thirteen. I was might have, must have been like eleven or twelve. I heard Bow Wow and I thought he was the dopest shit ever. <laughs> and like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All that. Yo, you know I'm what not saying? even mad at him. Yo, yo, but yeah, hip hop heads are like that's the first shit. But you know what I'm saying? But I'm they can't be mad at me for being young. Like I'm just young. That's the kind of music that was being played when, True. you know, I was growing up. So when I started actually taking music seriously, I like when I finally decided like, yo, I really want to do this, and you know what I'm saying? And I want to make this a full-time thing with me. So I didn't want to dis disrespect anybody. I kind of went back and paid my dues and kind of um, did my homework on a lot of, uh, you know, the, the legends, you know, the Wu-Tangs and, and the Nasers and all that, you know what I'm saying, Rakim, all that. So I went back and um, kind of did my homework. And I'm still learning because, you know, that's a lot of history that I got to go through. But, um, yeah, so I went back and did that. But Bow Wow was like, I was like, oh, shit. You know what I'm saying? I want to do this. Like, <laughs> he came out with the video, and I was like, damn, you got all the bitches chasing after him. Like, I mean, you know? So, yeah. Gotta love an honest answer. Yeah, I mean, that's um, honesty right there. So, being that you are from Delaware, yeah. what is, like, the hip-hop community like out there? Because I know in Philly, it's big. We have Meek <coughs> Mill, we have Lee Mason, we have Young Savage, we have Chill Moody, who mm -hmm. you work with. So, what is, like, the difference from working in Philly, because right now we are filming in Philly versus being back home in Delaware. Well, Delaware, um, I feel like <clears throat> it's kind of like a, like not a connected community. It's not as connected as Philly is and a lot of other um, places are just because I really actually don't even know the reason why uh, our scene is as it is. Um, but it just feels like we don't have a lot of support for our artists. And um, I guess that's just because a lot of other bigger places don't really support us and don't really acknowledge us and um you know so why why would we I, I feel like we just haven't come together as a community and kind of been like yo let's like you know what i'm saying let's i mean he's from delaware but you know what i'm saying let's let's try to actually put him on the map like that sounds crazy because if you said like if you told someone from delaware like yo this guy's actually hot he's from delaware they're gonna look at you like what like he's from delaware like get out of here you know what i'm saying like no knock against uh, Shiz Nitty, you know what I'm saying? But he's he's the biggest artist that we've had come out of the state. And, um, you know, he's 
the, the one song everybody knows about him is Socks in the Air. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it's like, I'm not, not, no knock against him, but it's like if you really want to talk about, you know, some serious lyrical music and you're talking about Delaware, it's like the only person I ever heard from y'all state is shit is nitty. He's <laughs> talking about some Socks and I don't get out of here with that. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like that's the kind of mindset that we have. But once, <clears throat> once, uh, we're, we're able to get put, one of us, hopefully, you know, God, God willing, it's me, but one of us gets put on a platform where we can actually touch a lot of people and um, are in a position to talk to a lot of people and uh, they're, they're able to see that we have talent and the community will come together and be like, okay, you know, we do got talent and they'll stand behind us and that'll just make the push even stronger behind whoever's, you know, getting that first look, you know what I'm saying? And that'll just open the venue for all of the other dope artists because we got talent, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to K Rivers, Eris Sparks. Um, you know, a lot of guys out there that were, uh, Mugga Mitch, um, just throwing names out there, so it's my homies, but, yeah, we got, we got talent out there, believe really that. So, being that you are from Delaware, you do receive a lot of love from Philly, what is that like? Um, it's dope, I mean, a lot of people will not notice, <coughs> but, um, I went to school in Philly, went to LaSalle, um, <laughs> LaSalle love, yeah, I went to LaSalle for two, uh, a year and a half, um, and it's definitely dope, um, you know. That's where I kind of <laughs> actually got my first, um, I think I got my first kind of core fan base, you know. I performed my first show with LaSalle <coughs> in Philly. And um, my first couple of shows, I think actually all my shows have been in Philly or the Pennsylvania area. So um, that's kind of where I kind of started out, getting my uh, fan base up. So that's, <coughs> that's definitely dope. Um, you know, I can't really say nothing about that because Philly or Philly, Philly critics are one of the, like, some of the hardest critics you ever come by, you know what I'm saying? They really tell you how it is, you know what I'm saying, from their sports teams to music to, they'll tell you, like, they don't give a fuck about the feelings, <laughs> they're they gonna tell you how it is, so, true, true. you know, the fact that, you know, a lot of people from Philly really fuck with me and, like, really like my music, um, that meant a lot to me, you know what I'm saying, so, that was, that was, that's love, you know what I'm saying, it's always love when I come up here. Um, okay, so... You are working on this is mixtape number two, correct? Number two. Your first mixtape, the reservation, was uh, hosted by DJ Damage. Yeah. Um, how can you say was how how has your growth been since that first mixtape till now? Well, the first one, um, I think I was just I was really growing. You know what I'm saying? And you know, uh, somebody told me I, I could rap. You know what I'm saying? So I kind of. I kind of took that and ran with it, you know what I'm saying, and not really took the time to actually hone in on what I want to do. I just kind of rushed into it a little bit. So I think the first one was definitely a rush project, project, and I just wanted to give people some music. <clears throat> but um, in retrospect, listening to it and everything, um, I kind of took that time to sit back and like actually look what I did and look what I want to do and look where I want to be, um, and kind of develop what I want to do for this next tape. <clears throat> so. Um, you know, the first project helped me out a lot, you know what I'm saying? Um, just figure out what I don't want to do and what didn't work, you know, and now I kind of see what I want to do for this next one after, like, end of December, by the way. True, true. Um, so I see you wearing the Black Diamond Shambhala, so you know I have to ask, the Black Diamond Shambhala was like an internet sensation. Yeah. What was that like for you? That was really dope. Um, uh, I didn't even, the crazy part about Black, no, Black Diamond Shambhala was that wasn't even supposed to be on the tape. With me, <clears throat> I mean, I haven't made a whole bunch of projects, but my first project, I just worked up to the deadline. Like, I had a deadline set, and I had a release date for the mixtape. Um, but, you know, I love music, and I love doing music, so I was just still making music. Like, even after I had, okay, I'm going to give all my music to my engineer for him to mix and master on this date, and then this date is going to get released, you know. But after he had all the music, I was still making music up, up to that point, you know what I'm saying? So, like, a week before I was supposed to drop the tape, I made that song and like a couple people heard it and like yo this is really dope like and then some uh, some more people heard it and like yo this is really dope and I was like fuck it throw it on tape you know what I'm saying so I threw it on there and um that got the most love um and that's kind of really how I got my uh got my kind of core fan base um you know from other places <clears throat> they heard that and they kind of you know they kind of rock with me now so <clears throat> that was definitely cool so for all you guys that don't know about the first mixtape, The Reservation, um, is a lot of J. Dot <coughs> going over other people's samples, and I think Black Diamond Shambhala's might be the only one that's not a sample, and 
this, there's two of them? Alright. <coughs> My creative director has just informed me that there's two of them. Shout out to Mo. Shout out to Mo. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so there's two of them. Black Diamond Shambhala is being one of them, and I literally can tell you, like, first time I heard Black Diamond Shambhala, um, oh, for everybody else who doesn't know, we do go back. We're, we are explorers, so, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Um, I remember hearing it, and literally, like, I think I may have called like four people and was like, "Yo, you gotta hear this," because it was that. <laughs> it, it was Matt. It's crazy. Like the song's just crazy, and if like just go listen to it. So that's really how it got spread around. People were just like, yeah. "Yo, go listen to this shit." <laughs> go uh, it's crazy. Like, like it's crazy. Um. <clears throat> so, what what can we expect from this new project? After lights, um, I'm really kind of. <clears throat> I really. You know, I like talking about this because I'm really proud of what I'm building or what I'm in the process of building. Because obviously we're in the studio right now, but um, we are. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just really proud of, of this, and you know, despite what people may say about it or whatever, I can, I'm gonna be proud of it regardless, just because I'm looking at what a lot of artists are putting out, you know, mainstream and independent, <clears throat> and I and I just listen to what I'm, you know, having the works and for this project, and it's just. I can just be proud of it just on the fact that it's different, you know what I'm saying? It's it's, it's really different from a lot of stuff. And not, not necessarily it sounds like really different, like you're going to get a lot of different sounding beats or anything like that. But um, after lights, the whole thing about it is <coughs> um, just trying to convey the, the idea of living forever. That's the whole thing with after lights. And uh, when I say live forever, not in the physical, just in the minds of others, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Every day when we interact with people, we um, we influence them. You know what I'm saying? So, what I wanted to do with my career and with this mixtape specifically was uh, just you know try to convey the idea of living forever to everyone. Um, you know, we want to impact people in a positive way. You know, you know our actions should speak louder than our existence. You know, when we're gone, what we do should speak past that. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I mean by live forever, and um, that's that's kind of what. I want to do with Afterlights, and also, um, that's the positive side of Afterlights, and the negative side is how you can kind of influence someone in a negative way, and you can live forever um, in someone's life uh, negatively. So, it's, it sounds kind of abstract right now, but when you listen to it, like, you'll hear it, and it's like a story built into the actual mixtape, you know what I'm saying? It's like a whole mixtape, and then you have a story inside of it which a lot of people will, you know, I, I mean, it'll go over some people's heads, but a lot of people will be able to connect songs with songs and be able to follow the story, <clears throat> and it's pretty dope. The story is actually really, uh, it's really kind of dark, but it's dope, you know what I'm saying? So I think a lot of people will like that. So we spoke earlier about Kingdom Hearts with Chell Moody, um, which is crazy. Go to the iSocialite page, iSocialiteMedia.com to hear it. Um, how did that project even come up? <clears throat> the King March? Yeah. <coughs> um, I just been a, uh, I definitely been a fan of Chill Moody for a while. And, um, you know, that was before I even started really taking music seriously. And, um, you know, I just, I just, I was like, made this song. I had the beat for, uh, actually a while, matter of fact. Um, my, uh, the same, my producers, uh, in-house producers, Cornmill. They made Black Diamond Shabazz, they made the beat for Kingdom Hearts. Um, <clears throat> and, uh, you know, I had the beat and I was like, I like it, you know what I'm saying? But it's, it's something missing, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I need something else. And I've been a fan for Chill Moody, so I just reached out to him and he was super cool. You know, the people that he has in his camp are super cool. And um, they were down to work with me. Um, so, you know, knocked the, knocked the song out and uh, it was cool, you know what I'm saying? So, I think we uh, definitely created something. A lot of people can listen to, you know, not just from around this area. Uh, a lot of different people can listen to, so <coughs> I think that's cool. And I definitely think me and Chill will have uh, some more shit. Shout works. out to Chill and definitely, shout out to Johnny Black. Word. Um, so what is it, I don't think I touched on this before, but what is it like receiving, like, so much love all, because I think, like, you release the reservation and then, like, I think, like, you did like a special drop of like Black Diamond Shambhala's and everybody loved it. Mm -hmm. And then you did, you just did the drop for Kingdom. Kingdom Hearts and everybody loved it. So what is it like being from Delaware, <coughs> having no type of buzz, you said you've only been doing it for a little bit, to having like people doing interviews and people doing write-ups about your music, yeah. what is that like? 
that yo that really is like the really thing that keeps me motivated when um, when you get that like in in this industry for any uh, upcoming artist um, cause you know I, myself you're gonna have uh, lows definitely you're gonna have some low lows and um you know you're not gonna think people not liking it or whatever and it's gonna be a whole compilation of things that's gonna affect your mood and, and your uh, your mindset whether you should keep on pushing and keep on going in this path or whatever but that's the one thing um if not anything else uh, that really keeps me going you know what i'm saying um just the love from just fans like it seems like you know that's uh one of the reasons i think i'm really supposed to be doing this because every single time i'm like yo am i really supposed to be doing this like am i really you know what i'm saying this for me i get a tweet from somebody somebody out somewhere australia i remember one time I was just sitting there like, yo, I really don't know if I should be doing this. Like, you know what I'm saying? I got problems at home. You know, I should be just focusing on getting my family straight. You know, family is struggling right now. And some, uh, I want to say, uh, at Dur, you know, at A Dur, uh, he tweeted me. I think he, he's from Australia. And he said, he tweeted me and said, um, J. Mars, I've been, I've been uh, playing your, uh, your mixtape. It's been on heavy rotation. You're going to change the world. I'm going to be behind you forever. You know what I'm saying? He said, I'm going to change the world. And that really kind of stuck with me. Like, someone who's never met me before, never had a conversation with me, just listened to me through my music, said, I'm going to change the world. And that really that really affected me. So, you know what I'm saying? It got me kind of emotional. I was like, like you know what I'm saying? So yeah. that's the kind of stuff that really, you know, love love like that, from, especially from other countries where they, they haven't even met you before. It's like, that's that's really love. You know what I'm saying? So that's, that's, that's really crazy. You know what I'm saying? So I that's why I love this industry because there's, I really don't feel like there's any really other industry where you can get that kind of interaction with thousands of people you know what I'm saying you can't really do this besides you know maybe maybe being a professional athlete you know what I'm saying but this is the one area where you can really touch it like a million people and they can touch you back by just what they said and it's, it's crazy so yeah that's crazy true true I want to thank you for giving us your time. Yeah, you. I know we are definitely in the middle of a recording session. I love this. But, <laughs> yeah, we definitely are. But before we go, can I ask for you to spit something real fast for the viewers? Oh, man. You got me. Got me. I gotta, gotta put you on the spot. Got gotta put you on the spot, though. The years in me. <laughs> um, I said, um, I said, dreams out living is eternity of things. Talk to cheddar forever. It ain't concerning me. I turn to be. Generation heroes to travel where we please with bitches from overseas looking like a bag of euros Adding zeros to our salaries cooking his got mouth to feed music for the world guarantee they travel miles to see a nigga from the diamonds He shines in my genetic moving fans of different countries the music's telekinetic look Charles X shit plotting on my next shit forever thanking God for the position I've been blessed with working too hard tell him it's pay up time cuz we ain't even balling yet It's just a layup line look I'm warming up, forming trust with my fans, and I let them know that patience is a must. In advance, see us all in the plans, got my grind up, diamond in the rough, and tell them that we finna shine up. My time up, I'm gone. All right. Well, <laughs> everybody, make so sure nice. you go follow J. Dot on Twitter. What is it? J. Dot Mars. J. Dot at J. J. Dot Mars. J. D. O. T. M. A. R. I'm your girl, Yantan Soup, on Twitter. And make sure you check us out online, either on Twitter at yeah. iSocialite. Or you could go to our website, isocialitemedia.com. And I'm Yanta, and this is J. Myers, and we're out. Bye. Make good a piece of my pot. I keep it real with homies, homies keep it real so I lie. Now while I watch this blow up, we built this from the flow up. We had them hoes up in a while, it's pockets, watch us sew up and pull up and roll up in different rides every week. Try and get the cheese, get my niggas out the streets. Why you think I don't sleep? Work is just all in my song. Sister made to knock us off, I'm just trying to put us on. Trying to put us on, and I'll be damned if we don't shine. Trying to do it by myself, motherfucker, co sign. Dreaming and styling for black diamond shabalas, Moscato bottles and models. You see me, you better holla, holla at me when you're speaking. Now I'm known for killing beats, but if you see me, guaranteed that that's the same. Oh, me.